more about the uh, coronavirus epidemic living, living in that time. Today, the governor compared the coronavirus to the devil, to Satan, Beelzebub, to old scratch. Then he quickly added, of course I don't mean to say that the virus is the devil. To which I say, come on, Gov, you most certainly did compare the virus to the devil. And it's the second time I've heard you do it, using the same anecdote, the one with the nuns. Myself, I've compared the virus to the Joker. I spent a few moments listening to the sound, really, not the sense, just the sound, of the soft-spoken, ultra-sincere lady doctor. She reminds me of Shirley Temple when she was young and playing Heidi. Her voice is wispy, almost dreamy, and she's so sincere it sounds like she's high, way up there, floating through this tough time. From time to time I'll hear people, mostly newspaper reporters, refer to the virus as the novel coronavirus. I hear that and I think, wow, somebody's already written a book. I'm sure they have. Another way to cash in. But they'd have to call it the novel, novel coronavirus. They call it novel because it was new back when it first hit last year in China. It's new, they say, and we don't know anything about it. That makes it much more dangerous and unpredictable, like the Joker, or maybe even the devil. They also call it COVID-19. I'm guessing that the first 18 COVIDs are old news. They're not novel. I'm also guessing that based on 1 through 19, we can be expecting COVID-20 any time now. If that's true, the magnitude of the menace we're facing is daunting and never-ending. That comparison with the devil is looking better. YouTube is making an odd announcement. They are saying that because of the epidemic, fewer direct human reviews of content on the channel will be performed in an attempt to protect the health of what they call their extended workforce. As a result of this, they say, they may be removing content that does not violate their community guidelines. In other words, they're going to join the bandwagon and err on the side of caution. Always a safe play. And one that inevitably backfires with miserable or embarrassing consequences. Oh well, the First Amendment is so named because it's always the first to go. I can only hope that they don't run me. They certainly could, and so they might. The one thing I have going is that I'm such a minuscule target that I'm probably not on their radar. Also, the sheer volume of uploads, millions every day. I don't know how they managed it in the first place. Content review, I mean. I don't believe they did. Maybe reacted when a subscriber raised an objection. Now they may be eliminating a certain quota at random to show that they were on guard. Another blind policy. I'm beginning to understand that old saying, that in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Now, I still doubt that. I think that the kingdom of the blind would have a blind king, for sure, and that the one-eyed man would be in jail, or on the run, or on the chopping block. Otherwise, how do we stand? What's going to happen? Don't look at me. I'm in a car being driven by the governor. The car is in park, the engine is idling. We're in a tunnel in the woods. I get that the future is uncertain, but that uncertainty is a matter of degree. In times of war, everything comes apart. It's almost all uncertain. For us right now, I'd have to say that the uncertainty factor is running high. It's tough to make plans. Any opinion about the future is nearly entirely speculative a model. The farther out you get, into summer and fall, people tend to think that things will settle down. There will be pro football of some kind, 
but probably not college. Baseball might be able to work something out. I think that the trumpet is going to rectify the disparity between the huge businesses that have stayed open and the small ones that were closed. State laws on masks vary. I think it would be easier to make, the mandato make them mandatory for all public places. As with the businesses, equal treatment is much easier to understand, resulting in a willingness to comply, however grudgingly. The strangeness of these days persists. In a way, the goofy, soft-spoken, ultra-sincere lady doctor might be a better spokesperson for the epidemic than the trumpet. He's a cheerleader. She's a flower child.